Welcome to the ultimate guide to workflow in Lightroom and Photoshop. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. Today we got a cool episode for you. It's all about workflow and if you guys haven't paid a lot of attention to workflow and you probably haven't thought about the importance of it, you might be saying, well, that's not really that big of a deal. But I can tell you after shooting years and years of images and thousands and thousands of images that workflow is an extremely important part of photography and working with your images on a computer. So today we're going to show you guys, I'm actually going to import images into a memory card. We're going to show you how we catalog those images and actually like get them stored on our computer. Then I'm going to show you guys some really cool things with file system and file naming that help it make it really easy when you need to find those files. Let's say you're, you know, two years from now, you need to go back and you need to find that PSD or you need to find your output, output JPEGs, you need to find your original uh, camera raw files. We're gonna make it really easy to do that. So then we're gonna go through, show you some minor adjustments in Lightroom. Then I'm gonna go through and show you how to get those into Photoshop and then back into Lightroom and get everything cohesive and together in a really nice workflow that we use here in our studio with all of our computers. So the first step is importing your images from a memory card. We've got a compact flash memory card and I've opened Lightroom. We're just gonna hit import here and it's gonna find your memory card. Now we're actually importing images from our recent workshop in the Bahamas. These are student images, so I've just kinda of like loaded them up right here on the memory card and we can see really, really cool images. Let's just uncheck, we've got a couple movies on there. So you can actually uncheck, like if I'm going through and maybe I've taken a couple images that don't have the right exposure, they're way overexposed or way underexposed. This happens a lot, I'll just uncheck them, it'll save time importing as well as save space on the computer. So we're gonna import those. Now we have a couple options. This is where you're importing from, so EOS Digital here on the left. Right over here, you're gonna see organize. You can choose by date or into one folder. I prefer organizing those by date. Now, on this computer, we're just having them load into the pictures fo folder. So you can click on pictures, it'll automatically create a year folder. So we've got a 2014 year folder, and then it's gonna create subfolders for each of the dates that these images were actually shot on. So this is the way that I prefer to do all my cataloging. And whatever works for you guys, go ahead and do that method. But this is what works for us, and this is what works when you have multiple people trying to access files from you know, different dates across different computers, it really, really is important to get a good cataloging system. So I'm just gonna hit copy and it's gonna copy these. Um, they've already been converted to DNG. If you're just shooting like straight from your camera and it's either a, you know, a CR2 or a NEF or whatever, I would recommend using copy as DNG. What that's gonna do is it's gonna lower the file size and make it a little easier if you need to transfer the files from like your main computer to a hard drive or something like that. So we're gonna hit copy because they're already DNGs and I'm gonna hit import and we're gonna wait for a second for everything to show up. All right, so everything's loaded into the computer and we can see these are the files that were actually on the memory card and they've loaded onto the computer. Now we're gonna go ahead and open up this 2014 folder and you can see these images were actually taken across a few different days. Now, if I'm doing a big photo shoot that actually takes a few different days, I generally don't want each of the days that the photo shoot happened. I generally want all that information in the same exact folder. So that's kind of what we're gonna do here today because this was all from, basically it's the same genre, right? So I wanna keep all that together. It was all the same shoot, even though it did take a few days. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and click on my first day. We've got 527 right there, and we can see we've got some really cool beat shots. This is a exposure bracketing for what's gonna wind up being an HDR shot. So these are the only images that are there. But I want, I'm gonna just go ahead and put everything into this folder. Now the first thing I wanna do, let's say you know, we've got a ton of dates, and imagine you, you shot you know, 50 or 100 dates out of the year. This would just be a giant list of dates right here. So I want a little bit better of a way to kind of identify what we're doing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually rename this folder. I'm gonna double click here, and, or right click rather, and I'm gonna go to rename. So rename, we're gonna leave the date on there. So leaving the date on there makes sure that everything is gonna be organized well, but then I'm gonna call this Bahamas shoot. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and hit save, and then we've got the date, here is the Bahamas shoot, and then I know exactly what's gonna be on there. So that's the first thing, is make sure you get your naming correct. Now the next thing we're going to do is actually create a couple subfolders under there, and a lot of people miss this step. 
what they do when they actually like load files into their computer, they just have like a you know the the date file there, and then they've got all their images. They've got you know all the raw files and their JPEGs and their you know PSDs or TIFFs that they're editing, all that stuff, and it's all just like a, a giant mess in the same folder, which makes it almost impossible when you're trying to actually like keep that stuff organized. And let's say you need to come back to a project and you know you need to find your PSD or whatever it is really quickly and make some edits to that. So. What we've done is we've created a system, and this is actually used in, is, as an industry standard as well. We've created a system that makes it a lot easier to identify what all those images are and where they belong. So this is why we're going to create a couple subfolders now, and that's going to really help us out when we actually need to access this information. So to create subfolders, just two finger click or right click here, and I'm going to go to create folder inside. Okay, now we're going to create four subfolders. Our first one is going to be called capture. There we go, and you click on this little arrow there, down there, and it'll automatically show up. So we're going to do another one. All right, we're going to call this master. We've got another one. We're going to call it output, and then we've got another one, and we're going to call this select. So each time I am doing, each time we're importing images into the computer, I'm creating all four of these folders: capture, master, output, and select. Now, capture is basically the capture file. So this is the raw files. Output is whatever goes out to the web. So this is like the final folder. This is like you know the JPEGs or the things that are going to go out to print. Your master folder is whatever is going to be actually your edits. So that's going to be like your PSDs or your TIFF, those layers files that are like your master edits. And then the selects are what's going to be exported out as TIFFs from the regular capture folder. Now, I'm going to show you guys all that so it, you won't be uh, you won't be confused on it. Okay. So what we're going to do is let me just right click here and I'm going to go go ahead and say show in finder. Okay, so here in the finder, all right, let's go back, let's see, right click, show in finder, we'll do that one more time. Okay, so here we can see we have our capture, master, output, and select. So it, it's really nice because it actually creates this in your, uh, in your computer. It creates it in the file folder structure and things like that. So we've got a couple of DNGs, and then we've got these folders. And then each of these folders just has a bunch of DNGs, right? So we're going to clean this up, but we're going to do it all in Lightroom. So what, we're doing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift click on, all, on these three images here. Okay? We're going to click and drag them into Capture. And it's going to go ahead and move them for us. Now, here I'm going to click on these other dates. I'm going to hit Command A to select all my images. And I'm going to move those into Capture as well. We're going to click here, hit Command A, move those into Capture. All right, click here, Command A, and move those into Capture. OK, so now from the Bahamas shoot, we've got it well labeled. So let's say we're going through our images. We've got Bahamas shoot, and these things don't have anything in them, right? So we can go ahead and remove these three folders. Just right click and go to, down to Remove. There we go, and we're good to go. So what started out as like a big mess is now a lot more simple. So we're going to look at this and say, like, OK, where are our capture files? This is everything that's captured. Now, sometimes on a really large shoot, what I'll do, let's say we're shooting 10 different models or different locations, things like that, I'll create subfolders inside of my capture folder. So to do that, again, just right click, go to create folder inside capture, and we're just going to call one of these landscape. All right, so we can open that up, and I can right click, and we can call this one portrait. OK, so now I can just look at all my landscapes, and I'm going to put those right into my landscape folder. And then my portraits, we're going to put all those into the portrait folder, including some fun ones of me. There we go. And then our landscape photos, those are going to go in landscape. So now I'm able to see, like, OK, from the Bahamas shoot, the images that I took, here are the landscapes. And here are the portraits. OK, so now we've got a really nice set of organization. We're ready to do a little bit of work with it. So let's go to one of our portraits. This is a nice portrait here. This is, uh, <laughs> we just shot this in a pool. It was kind of sunset. So we want to edit this just a little bit. Let's say like this is our image that we want to go ahead and use. So this is our portrait here. What I'm going to do, let's hit D for the development module real quick. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this because this is mostly workflow, but I'm going to show you guys some of the things you can do. Let's just fix our white balance here. Let's click on our skin, get our white balance a little bit nicer. Let's bring up our shadow levels so we can actually see what's going on in the background. Bring up our black levels a little bit. And our tone was slightly, there we go. Maybe bring our temperature up just a little bit to warm up her skin a little bit. And let's bring up our vibrance and maybe our highlights a little bit. There we go. So here in the development module, you can see this is what it looked like you know, when we imported it. 
And now we've got it here. So I'm going to hit G to go back to the grid. Now the nice thing is I can actually, if I have a couple different shots from the same shoot, like this shot and that shot, I can command click on both of those and I can go to sync settings. And it's going to automatically apply the same exact settings to other images. Okay. So now we say like this is this looks good. This is actually, you know, one of the images we want to use for our final edit. So we need to get this to a place where we can actually edit it. So now what we're going to do, we're going to start using some of these other folders, the master, the output, the selects, things like that. So I'm going to right click here and we're going to go down to export and I'm going to go to export. So here you can choose to create a couple presets. What we're going to do, we're going to choose this to export to folder later. So you can actually choose what folder you want this to export. Okay. Here in our file image settings, I'm going to choose a TIFF. And I'm always using TIFFs. TIFFs are really great. And I used to use PSTs quite a bit, but nowadays I use TIFFs. You can still use layers and things like that. It's an industry standard and it works really well. You can choose to cho have this be in Profoto RGB, which is my preferred color space here. You can choose your bit depth of 8 bits or 16 bits, whatever you're doing there. And um, I, generally, if it's, a, if it's a very important image that I want to spend a lot of time editing on, and I need to really push and pull those numbers, I'm going to do 16 bit. Other than that, I usually do 8 bit. So let's choose 8 bit. OK, we're going to hit export here. And now you're going to say, OK, what do you do with this? Now this is what goes into the select. So this is an image that I have a duplicate of it, right? So I'm not moving it. I'm just ex exporting it from a DNG into a TIFF, and that's going to go into the Selects folder. So we're going to hit Open. It's going to go ahead and export that out into the Selects folder. So here we go. It's exporting. And now what we can do is I can just double click, or sorry, right click here on the Bahama shoot, and I'm going to go down to Synchronize Folder. What this does is it finds all the new images that are in this folder. And it's because Selects was a subfolder in here, it's going to find that too. I'm going to hit Synchronize. There we go. So now we have our capture folder. These are all the original images. You know, straight, I can just continue editing these. Or I can revert those back to the original. And now I've got my selects folder. We've got this image here that this is the select we actually want to work with. OK, so now what we're done, we've set up. We know exactly what's in all these folders. Our organization looks great. Now let's say we want to edit this a little bit in Photoshop. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead into Photoshop now. And I'm going to show you guys how to open this folder, how to save it out, and then how to get that back into Lightroom. So here we are in Photoshop. I'm going to hit Command O to open. We're just going to go to our pictures. Here we are, 2014 Bahamas shoot and down to selects. Look how easy that was to find exactly what I wanted. Even if I had you know, 100 different photo shoots here, I would see the date as well as the name of the shoot. And I know this is where my selects are. So I'm not digging through a bunch of different files. I've already done my organization. Let's go ahead and hit, it, go ahead and hit open there. It's going to take a second to open the image. And then we're just going to do a tiny bit of, you know, let's say I just want to use my healing brush tool. We're just going to get rid of some of these water spots that, you know, are a little bit, you know, they take away from the image, whatever it is. So obviously I'm not doing a whole edit right now. This is just, you know, the type of stuff that I would do in Photoshop as opposed to Lightroom. You saw what I did in Lightroom earlier, changing things like our exposure and white balance and fill light and things like that. That's what I do with Lightroom. Everything else gets done in Photoshop. So we remove some of that stuff. Let's go ahead and hit Shift Command S, which is Save As. And then now I've actually saved something. So like, let's say we had 10 selects. Those were all of our images. Let's say we composited those together. It did something to them. And then we have a master file. So the PSD, which is going to be the, like the layered TIFF or the layered PSD or the layered PSB, whatever you're using, that's going to go in your master file. And usually I'll rename that as well. All right, so we're just name this pool.tif. OK, we want to be sure that we are seeing everything there. There's no layers in there. Well, let's go ahead and create a new layer. There we go. We'll create a new layer in here and to show you that you can save TIFFs. When you export TIFFs out originally, they're just going to be you know, a one layer file. But TIFFs do support layers. All right, so Shift-Command-S, it's going to say use layers because we actually have layers in there. And here we're going to choose our master folder. This is where it's going to go. So if I need to get back to this at any point in time, if I need to go like, oh, where's the actual folder that I used to, you know, where's the original edit that I, that I did? I need to go back and edit it a little bit more. I know exactly where it is. All right, so we're going to get pool. I'm going to go ahead and embed this color profile. We're still in Profoto Pro RGB, and we're going to hit Save. OK, let's go ahead and hit OK. So 
we're good in Photoshop. Let's pretend that edit took three hours and you got it absolutely perfect. So we're going to go back into Lightroom. Again, I'm just going to right click here and I'm going to go to synchronize folder. Okay. And now it's going to show up here in my master. So my selects are just what's coming out from the capture. So these are all the different tiffs that I'm going to work with. And then the master, this is the actual edit. And you can see zooming in, it's got, you know, these little areas removed and it's pool.tif. Okay. So this is really, really great. Now the last step we need to do is figure out how to get these from, you know, basically just a TIF. We're going to get these, or a TIF, a TIF. We're going to get these out to the internet. Okay. So what I'm going to do is right click here. We're going to go down to export and I'm going to go to export here. Now we're going to choose in our settings, I'm going to choose this to be a JPEG. Okay. Now, if you're going to be uploading these images to the internet, you want to make sure your color space is sRGB. That's good. That's going to be the best way because internet browsers use sRGB color space. So if you've ever uploaded an image to the internet and it's been like totally wrong colors, it's probably because your color space was wrong. You can choose your, uh, you can choose your quality here. You can choose a resizing. So like, let's say I want this with a width of a hundred or a thousand pixels and we can say sharpen for the screen and the amount will be standard. Okay. So that all looks pretty good. Now, if you know, you like all that information, you can add a preset here in Lightroom. Let's just go to add and I'll just call this output two because I already have a regular output. Okay. So we're going to hit output two and then I'm going to hit export and it's going to say, where do you want this to export? So I'm going to click on my output. There we go. And we're going to hit open. All right. And then again, you can just go to a synchronized folder and it's going to bring it back in here. So this image now in the output, I know it's going to be a thousand pixels wide, which it is. It's sharpened for the web and it's the right color space. So at any point in time, if I need to go back and look at the original image, I can go back, you know, okay, here are all the different portraits from this photo shoot. I can work through them. If I need to go back and edit the master file, I know exactly where that is. So I can, you know, do a little bit more retouching and then I can go and export it out again in the output folder. So this is a really nice workflow that works for us and it solves a ton of problems, especially when you've got thousands and thousands of photos that you need to get through. This is a wonderful, wonderful workflow and we've used it here in our studio. We've got, you know, six computers hooked up to 10 different RAID arrays and servers and all this stuff and it uh, works really well. Now, if you guys are doing things like behind the scenes, like so let's say you're doing some behind the scenes video of the, of the photo shoots, just make that in the same folder, right? Click here, go to create folder in, in, inside here, BTS, and you've got behind the scenes and you can load up all your video here as well. If you're going to be doing an online promotion, let's say you've got some graphics going on, that's going to go in the same shoot as well. So you can see how well organized we are. Even if you had many, many different photo shoots, it would take almost no time to go through and say, you know, okay, cool. This is this file I know is good for the web. Let's go ahead and upload this and everything is good to go. Guys, that's it for the ultimate guide on workflow in Lightroom and Photoshop. I hope this episode helped out. If you have any other questions, leave them in a comment right down below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you guys can see many more of these awesome, awesome episodes. Comment down below if you have any ideas for future episodes and share this with your friends who are interested in Photoshop or photography. Again, thanks so much and I'll flirn you later. That was weird. I'll just flirn you later for regular. I'll just say it regular. Flirn you later. <laughs> Whew. Flirn you later.